I think the key is to, uh, to leverage dopamine reward prediction error in the best way. It's the surprise that, you know, if you take kids you're driving home from school and suddenly you pull into the ice cream shop, they're going to be so ecstatic. But if you tell them you're going to go to the ice cream shop and it's closed, huge drop below baseline. Does that mean if you tell them that you're going to the ice cream shop and it's open, that's less than not telling them that you're going to the ice cream shop and it's surprise? Correct. It's, it's, it, they literally tear out into maximum surprise is the maximum dopamine release. Then successful completion of the mission, so, <laughs> as it were, is the next and then unsuccessful. Is there not an argument to be made that you would be able to uh, drag out the amount of time that dopamine is released for because of the anticipation? Yeah, so, well, and people do this in relationship quite a lot, right? Anticipation is the kind of ultimate fuel of the courting dance, right? I mean, this is also, but one has to be very careful because whether or not it's from the male side or the female side or whatever variation thereof, <laughs> There's a, you only get so many reward prediction errors before people start to predict or associate low dopamine with somebody or some experience. In other words, if you, you know, uh, I'll use an example, uh, not for my own life, but if you say, you know, we're going to Costa Rica on vacation, and then you say, listen, I, I have to work. They might understand, but that's a letdown. It's a dopamine reward prediction error in the direction of lower dopamine. They might recover from it, they might not, but most people recover from it. If you do that two or three times, what ends up happening, and you can model this beautifully, and they've seen this experimentally in animals and humans, then you say, okay, we're really going to Costa Rica this time. And you think, well, the surprise is gonna be that you actually go. The amount of dopamine that's released for positive, for successful completion of the initial goal is far lower than it ever would have been. So you can only cry, well, so, yeah, I suppose that's not the right way to put it. You can only um, create positive anticipation so many times and then create a letdown before completion, that the pro delivery of the promise has very little impact. And so you have to be very careful with one's words. Better to say nothing than to let somebody down, uh, for sure, in the context of human relationship. And you know, this plays out in some um, less, perhaps, uh, amusing ways, where you, know, you look at people who are successful in life, and you always hear success builds success, and it's absolutely true. Like when students come to my lab and they do a PhD thesis, it's very important for me to get them onto a research track quickly that they're going to experience some success. Because if they spend four years and then it fails, that's devastating, and then they have to start over again. Same thing with kids. I mean, getting some success early on, even if it's low bar success, really does build up one's positive anticipation uh, and ability to perform well in the future because dopamine gives energy. Remember, it's the precursor to adrenaline and the sense that the world is predictable. Now, this can go a wrong way too, and I see this a lot with the idea that everyone gets a blue ribbon. This is terrible too because if everyone is rewarded every child is rewarded regardless of how well they performed, if they're all rewarded to the same level, you actually flatten the dopamine curve. And so in that sense, yes, everyone might feel you know, celebrated, but you actually are lowering motivation for the given activity. Uh, this has a whole landscape of, of research uh, in back of it related to intrinsic versus extrinsic reward. The strongest motivation is always gonna be intrinsic motivation. If you reward kids or adults for something too many times, even if they like that activity, the, the propensity to do that activity will be reduced. But if you reward without effort or without success, that is devastating for a nervous system. In fact, I've gone on record and I'll say it again and again and again, which is that dopamine that arrives without prior effort destroys people. This is this is drugs. This is, uh, you know, this is things like uh, cocaine and amphetamine. It's high levels of dopamine with no effort. Okay, they had to buy it, they had to find it, they had to whatever it, but that's no, there's no physical effort or mental effort involved in getting the dopamine peak. This is why hard work followed by reward, great. Working hard on a relationship and then it gets better, or there's a breakthrough, whatever it is. That is powerfully positive. Dopamine that just arrives because you say, oh, you're here, so you get reward terrible. And this is why rewarding every little positive thing that a child does with, you know, their favorite thing eventually diminishes the value of that thing and diminishes their ability to get motivated on their own. It's a very, very powerful system. One has to be very, very careful how one leverages it.